moved out here in 90 and start, went to work at this laboratory, the Columbia River Research Laboratory. And eventually went from working in the field, collecting uh, the data and whatnot, to uh, man coordinating efforts and uh, work in the laboratory. Because of my background in aquaculture, I was familiar with the fish rearing procedures and fish health and all that. And, uh, And I haven't seen the water up in the bushes like this. And they're really, they've really got the reservoir full. It's kind of nice, just a gentle westerly kind of pushes the boat along and then I can just pop the electric to put my boat wherever I want to. All right, there we go. Hopefully this one will stay on. Feel too much weight on this, but oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. So I thought here a little bit. So I'm using white today because the water's off color a little bit. Normally I'm really big. I'm using black, and. Uh, but the white seems to work really well. Chartreuse is probably another good one, color-wise. So, there we go. Oh, not bad. A good, good start to the morning. Yeah. Well, that, that's a good sign. Hopefully there's a few more out there. Well, I moved here in uh, 90 and basically started started fishing the Columbia immediately and and uh, there's you know there's a plethora of species here in the river the smallmouth being the prized sport game fish that they are. Um, today I'm I'm fishing with. Uh, an eight foot, nine inch uh, TFO Clouser rod. It's a new rod developed by Bob Clouser. And I'm using uh, the TF, uh, TFO Prism Reel, wide arbor. And my, uh, my line is an airflow line. It's called the Quick Max. It's got a 20 foot high density uh, tip on there with a running line, floating, floating running line. And it allows me to turn over these larger flies pretty easy. And I'm using a white, one of my own versions of a, uh, of a bugger. It's a white bugger with some flash. And, and I typically tie a lot of flies with glass beads. I'm known for my glass bead fly tying. And so I have glass beads in, in the bugger pattern I'm using. And today the, the water is we're having a little bit of a spring run off, so the water's off color slightly, and I'm using white. I typically really like to use black, and oftentimes start with that, but the white seems to be working really well. Chartreuse, this time of year, when the water's off, is another good color. So sometimes I switch around, but over time I've learned that when the water's this condition, it's probably maybe a couple feet of visibility, and uh, I'll switch to the to the brighter colors. And I like to add uh, this fly has weighted barbell type eyes and uh, helps the fly, gives it that jigging motion and bass, you know, really love the jigging action. Gets the fly down quick. Cause like right today, you know, I'm dealing with the wind, I'm moving the boat. I don't have a lot of time to to lay out a perfect cast in the right spot. I've got to stick and move and stick and move and and uh, I need the fly to drop immediately into the cover or into the hidey hole where I'm fishing and uh, so everything I'm using today is quick sinking. The line, 
the fly um, so it gets down quick. One of the other things that I do that I started using quite a bit with all types of streamer fishing, even in salt water, is I add a about a size uh, 10 or 12 barrel swivel and I use short butt section on my leader, probably several feet long, put that barrel swivel on there and then put on about another two, two or three feet of tippet material. Today I'm using nine pound test, fluorocarbon. These fish aren't particularly leader shy. And uh, the swivel's great because it, it helps the fly track straight. It doesn't lay off on the side when you're stripping it in. It keeps the leader from twisting. So there's a lot of virtues adding that little swivel on there. The water, the water is, is about, uh, we've got 58 degrees and it's, it's on the cool side, but uh, retrieves, I just vary. I, I just want to dance that fly along, and, and so it doesn't need to be a slow retrieve. And early in the season, when uh, like in April, then uh, a slower presentation is necessary, like when you're starting to get you know 48 to 52. Once the water gets above 55, you can move a fly through through the water at a fairly quick pace for smallmouth and and they're going to move a considerable distance they're they're a little bit different than their largemouth cousin and that they'll they'll chase their prey down they're not necessarily an ambush type predator um, but they they'll go a considerable distance to chase their prey down and eat it so that's that's one of the virtues of smallmouth is they're really aggressive and they'll they'll move uh, you know, out of their, their hiding place or their hold to take their prey. Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm working the edges, but the, the water, you know, is like three or four feet along the edges and then um, it drops off. And I, I like to work the shoreline edge and then I like to work the drop off where, where there's, a, there's an abrupt change in depth. There's a during pre-spawn, there's a transition of fish moving from, from deep water. When I say deep, I'm gonna probably, you know, it could be as much as uh, 20 or 30 feet. And the fish are, are gonna be dispersed between near shore, which could be like, I've caught them in as shallow as four feet, for example. And, uh, but most of my fish this time of the year and with these kind of water temperatures are going to come out primarily in about 6 to 12 feet of water. But uh, like I say, I start near shore, fish the fly um, out towards the boat, and then I'm watching my depth finder so that I can see what the depth contour is doing and notice where the, the uh, drop-offs are. So I'm kind of covering two different zones here. I'm covering the near shore zone where fish are perhaps staging and getting ready to spawn. And I'm fishing the deeper water where fish are still moving around and they, and they haven't really um, moved into the shallows yet to start their, their spawning. I don't think I've ever had a problem without stripping smallmouths. I think they, they got pretty powerful tail and, and can seem to move pretty quick. So as you can see, I'm, I've got pretty good placement on my cast. Try to get relatively close, you know, a foot or so. I, I prefer to fish early because it's quiet, um, mainly before other anglers start to arrive too. Um, I think the less pressure there is on the fish, the better the fishing is. And smallmouth uh, have a period at uh, dawn and dusk, I believe, when, when the bite's good. But during the day, it can be good, too. Um, you know, I, they usually have a fairly hearty appetite, as I mentioned earlier. And, uh, but I think that um, the angling pressure can put them down. And uh, also, weather changes in weather conditions. Uh, I, I don't particularly like to fish when fronts are moving through and stuff. I mean, it can just shut right down. There's weed beds in here. And from past experience, I know the depth, I know the shoreline profile, 
And like I say, there's weed beds in here. So there can be bass in this whole entire little kind of flat corner in here. So you don't want to just necessarily uh, stick with casting and working the structure. You can cast randomly out in the open water if there's weed beds out there or perhaps a rock pile. And that's where the, uh, the depth finder really pays off so that you can learn an area. I can't emphasize enough the importance of having a decent depth finder. And I'm not worried about seeing fish on it. I just want to know what the substrate and the bottom looks like, the depth changes, because, uh, you know, in some cases you can have sudden drops and you can be down in 30 to 40, 50 feet of water and you're not going to do any good fishing a fly in, in uh, that kind of depth um, not knowing it when all you need is the first several feet in your cast near the shore. And notice that I'm, I'm kind of at an angle towards the shore and a lot of times I like to fish off at an angle um, to keep the fly in the zone uh, as long as possible. I wrote for about just about all the major magazines in the Pacific Northwest, Salmon Trout, Steelheader, um, Fly Fishing, Fly Tying, and I need to get busy with them again, but uh, Northwest Fly Fishing, uh, I've had some stuff with Fly Fishermen. One of my first smallmouth articles came out in, in that magazine, and uh, Washington, Oregon Game and Fish is another magazine. Ha! Huh, it's right there, I just picked up, I had the fly in the water, and. A little fart came up and grabbed it. But uh, yeah, hopefully in a few years he'll put on some weight and we'll be a little bit bigger. But that that was unexpected, right off the bow. That's. Interesting. So right now I'm in 20 feet of water, but I'm probably halfway between me and the shore, there's a bench. So I'm gonna cast over the top of that bench. I'm gonna work that fly back. That's a pretty good click just so I don't uh, snag on the bottom. But as I get closer to the boat, then I'm going to slow down and let the fly drop down to that deeper water. So I want to take advantage of working that fly in uh, the all, in complete zone. Well, the, the, one of the nicknames that, that smallmouth have is rock bass. And fishing riprap like you see along the shoreline here is one of my favorite areas to fish. And uh, they also, in this particular area, we're off the Columbia River in a little uh, back area, backwater area, and there's a lot of crayfish and a lot of food fish, but uh, crayfish also are fairly abundant in these rocky areas. But that's where I like to get, I do most of my fishing is along the riprap, thanks to the Army Corps of Engineers. But, uh, you know, and back in this other area, as I mentioned, you know, weed beds are good, but for some particular reason, the rocky structure and even rock bluffs seem to produce uh, most of the bass. And uh, they can be along current seams, they can be in still water areas like where, where, where I'm fishing at right now. Um, but for the most part, I think if a guy is just starting out, if he sticks with the rocky areas and points, and again, having a depth finder, you may stumble across a, a, a rock pile or, or a submerged reef and work that over and you'll probably pull some fish off of it.